Mod pack creators create the craziest playable content on the face of the planet, utilizing every single tool and mod they can get their hands on. And today, I will teach you some of these tools so you can start your mod pack creation journey the right way. Let's get started. Our first mod, Item Obliterator, allows you to remove any item from any mod or just plain old vanilla Minecraft. Because let's be honest, you don't want five of the same silver ingots from five different mods in the same mod pack. That would just be unprofessional and we want our mod pack to not have any duplicates or any jagged sides. To remove the items, run the game with Item Obliterator mod at least once and open up the configuration file for it. There should be a neat little guide teaching you how to do everything in there. This mod can also remove the right click functionality of items. This can remove recipes of items. It can do so much more. I'd recommend checking out the mods link in the description below for a more in-depth tutorial. Now so far we have fixed duplicate items or items we do not want in our mod pack. But have we considered blocks that generate in the world? No of course not. Which is where our next mod comes in block swap. This mod swaps any block of your choosing with any other block of your choosing, even in structures. Okay, let me go in game and show you what you can really do with this mod. So over here, I have four different silver ores from four different mods. So basically, the only ore that I actually want to exist in the game is this ore. But there are three others. Simply put in their ideas and replace them with stone. And when you place these bad boys down, they turn to stone. And as you can see, when I place this ore down, it actually turns into this ore. And it's pretty cool. And another really great use is that you can actually make it so that when players place down sand, maybe you can switch into a different sand or something. And you can even put block states in, which is pretty cool. This next mod is called CubeJS, and it allows you to add custom recipes and remove recipes, add custom items. And you can even add custom recipes from in-game if you use the crafting recipes exporter add-on. This mod can do so much more, but unfortunately, if I wanted to explain everything in this mod, I would be sitting here for hours. So, I'll link a video of a very knowledgeable user down in the description below. Check his video out. I learned everything I know basically from him. And I'll also leave a link to the wiki of the CubeJS mod. Believe me, it's super useful. Go and check it out. When you're making a mod pack, whether large or small, it's going to be important to have efficiency. And that efficiency can be achieved using the Craft Tweaker mod. Now this mod is legendary because it allows you to get the idea of items super easily. For example, if I have an inventory full of items that I want to remove, or I want to change the recipe of, I do slash CT, inventory, registry names, and boom, I got every single one of the item IDs. Because I mean, who would spend their time copying and writing down the item ID using a keyboard? Come on. So far, if this video helped you, please consider dropping a subscribe. I want to hit a thousand subscribers before 2026 and it's looking pretty possible. Now let's get on to the next mod. Now here in the next footage, there is a giant problem. See if you can spot it. See anything wrong with the mod? You got it, it's fucking disgusting. So how would I remove this mod? Because I have arachnophobia. Well, that's where our next mod comes in, bad mobs. This allows you to remove any mob, and for an alternative, I'll also recommend You Shall Not Spawn. Because both of these mods do the same thing, except I think bad mobs is a lot more um, beginner friendlier, I would say. But you can choose whichever one you want. Now let's talk about structures. The first mod is, what is this structure? This mod basically allows you to see what structure you are in by typing out widths in your commands. And it's super useful because if you dislike a structure from a specific mod, and you don't know which mod adds it, this is perfect to find out. But how would I remove it? That's where our next mod comes in, Structurify. This mod allows you to set the rarity of a structure, this mod allows you to disable structures, and it has full control over every single mod. This is awesome. Another two mods that is really useful is JEI and Jade. Jade allows you to see an item's name and what mod it's from, and it's super useful to have around. You can even see a mob's health. This is super useful if you're testing out modded weapons. JEI is useful for seeing recipes easily. You can even copy recipe IDs, so you can put them in CubeJS and remove them for good. It has a bunch of other hotkeys that you should definitely use if you want to maximize your output. Now I'm going to tell you some little tips and tricks quickly. Firstly, install Visual Studio Code. 
This is going to help you with everything. Stop using notes. If you're using notes for coding, you're a psychopath. Secondly, instead of doing slash game mode creative or whatever, use F3 plus F4. This allows you to switch your game mode way quicker. Also, use command aliases to create aliases for your commands. This can save you countless hours instead of typing out the whole command. Learn how to make data packs. You need this skill, trust me. You might need to open up a mod to see how it works, and if you have knowledge of data packs, you can actually figure out what's going on pretty easily. Use Paxi to load a data pack into every single world you generate. If you ever wondered how people create their quest lines for their mod packs, use FTB quests. It has a ton of options, and you can make awesome quests. Use configured or mod menu to configure mods from in-game instead of going out into the file of the configs and then configuring it. Use persistent creative inventory so whenever you go out of your creative inventory, when you go back in, it comes to the same place you left it before. Use the mod attribute setter to set custom attributes for items and mobs. Use the mod suggestion tweaker so that it actually recommends better commands for you. Use the mod biome replacer to replace biomes that you don't like, or replace duplicate biomes. If you're making custom structures for your mod pack, use world edit. And lastly, use the change items durability mod to change items durability. I hope this video helped you a ton because I spent a crap ton of time researching this video. So, I hope it helped. Anyways, see you guys on the next video and subscribe.